Hi everyone, Antoinette here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to talk about ways that you can develop a good balance of confidence with humility. Think about it, confidence is attractive. We all want more confidence. And when we see confident people, and they're confident in the right way, in an authentic way, which I'm gonna be talking about that, it is attractive in other people. And humility is one of those attributes that is admirable in other people. We admire people who are humble. When those two traits are combined together, they can be the difference maker in how much influence you have with others. In his book, Think Again, author and researcher Adam Grant highlighted evidence that confidence without humility breeds blind arrogance. And humility without confidence breeds debilitating doubt. Because if you have one without the other, then that great attribute comes across as negative. You really do need both. That is the secret sauce. So what are four ways that you can have that good balance of confidence with humility? First of all, someone who is confident yet humble is not into the comparison game with other people because they feel self-assured. So they don't need to compare themselves to other people all the time. Think about it, if someone was humble without feeling confident, then they might always be trying to please another person. They might be going out of their way just to be able to be a people pleaser because really they're still thinking about themselves. They want to be liked. However, the confident and humble person is not concerned about themselves. They're focused on the other person and they have a healthy self-image. They don't need other people to affirm them. They don't need other people to build them up. A client of mine who's really working on her confident humility, she was telling me that a couple of weeks ago, she went to lunch with someone and he started telling her all about his accomplishments, everything that had been going on with them. He appeared like he was successful on so many levels. He was talking about everything he was doing professionally, and it was amazing. He was talking about everything going on in his personal life, in his relationships, and it was amazing. Everything was wonderful. And so then when he asked her, so tell me what's going on with you, she was really tempted to match him. She was really tempted to start talking about the successes that she had been having lately because things are going really well for her. But she decided, you know what? I'm going to be confident in myself and who I am, and I'm going to be humble. I'm not going to feel the need to match him in matching him and talking about all the great things that are going on with me. So she did offer a few things that were going on with her, but she also talked about some of her challenges as well. So it wasn't this perfect life that she was coming back and explaining that was going on with her. At the time, it didn't seem natural to do that. It, it seemed more natural to match the way that he had been communicating with her. But later afterwards, when I was talking to her about it, she said, I really felt good on the inside because I felt secure in who I am. And I didn't need that affirmation from him. The second way that you can have a good balance between confidence and humility is by admitting your weaknesses, admitting your challenges. This is difficult for a lot of people, especially a lot of young professionals that I talk with. They hesitate being able to say if they don't know something at work or they don't understand something or in just everyday life, whenever you have failed or you've dropped the ball with something, being able to admit that takes courage and it is a sign of confidence when you are able to do that. Believe me, it took me years to get to the point where I could admit that I don't know something because you're putting yourself out there at the risk of being judged. However, when you do admit that you don't know something or you've dropped the ball or you're not good at something, then it is a sign of confidence. As long as you're not so self-deprecating that you're always putting yourself down, that is not a sign of confidence. 
But if you feel good about who you are and you are self-assured, then by admitting weakness and admit, admitting challenges, it is an attractive balance of confidence and humility. The third way that you can have a good balance between confidence and humility is by being confident in what you're saying and what you believe and being open to feedback and listening to others' opinions, especially if they're different than yours. Bob Sutton, author of Good Boss, Bad Boss, writes, speak like you are right and listen like you are wrong. And I love that. So being able to give your views, give your opinions, and when somebody has a different viewpoint or a different opinion, being able to suspend your beliefs and truly, truly listen to them. The next way that you can balance confidence and humility is by valuing everyone, meaning that you're confident you can take the initiative with other people by introducing yourself, by offering to help them, by including them in a group, whatever it is that requires someone to take the initiative with another person, that you're confident enough to be the person to do that, and you have a humble spirit about it. So you're not just doing that with people who can benefit you immediately or benefit you down the road or make you look good. You're doing that even with the people that you may never see again. You're doing that with the people who may never be able to help you. That is a true sign of someone with confident humility. Now I know I'm making all of this look and sound really easy to do, but believe me, I have struggled with all of these. Sometimes I err on the side of being too confident and not humble enough, and other times I have the humility, but I am less lacking the confidence. But when you work on really combining both of these in your actions and in your communication with others, it is going to be a difference maker. Now, if you know of someone who would benefit from this video, I hope you'll share it and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.